name, my nickname is Travis and my name is B041980007. And I am Sheikha Adam, name B041980042. And I'm Akmal, name B041889901. So today, let's conduct a session of podcast, yeah, about the topic of cattle reproductive. Travis, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, what's up, Sheka? So, um, from what I know, uh, hyphers must be observed frequently, but uh, also disturbed a li as little as possible. So, how should we perform supervision on hyphers during calving? Okay. Hyphers should be observed at least twice daily, more often if practical. Assistance can then be given early if needed. To be born alive, the calf must be delivered within approximately four hours after the appearance of the water bag. Early assistance can avoid death, uh, calving paralysis, and uterine prolapse in heifers. Heifers uh, should be kept close to the cattle yards during calving so that the early assistance may be given if necessary or needed. The, the labor required for supervision can be kept within a minimum if the safe, if the heifers are joined to calf over a short period from six to eight weeks. Keeping the heifers in a small paddock close to the house during calving can also reduce the time required for frequent observation. Calving difficulties can be induced by disturbance, hence frequent, uh, hence frequent checking must disturb the heifers as little as possible. Reasonably quiet cattle may be inspected by slowly riding through the mob on the horse. Binoculars are also an option for excitable cattle. Mm, I see, I see. So just now you mentioned about assistance that can be given if needed. What do you mean by that? What type of assistance? Can you elaborate more? So as you've known, the calf should normally be born within two hours of the appearance of the water bag. If the calf is not born within three hours of the appearance of the water bag, the heifers should be examined. If there is any doubt about the time of the appearance of the water bag, an examination should be carried out immediately. The decision to give assistance should be based firstly on the position of the calf. If a hind leg is visible or if only one foreleg is pre presented, or if there's any evidence of the malpresentation of the calf, assistance should be given immediately. The calf's chance of survival is greater if assistance is given early. If the position of the calf appears normal with the head resting on the front leg, then the condition of the heifer should be considered. A heifer that has ceased training and appear weak or exhausted should be assisted immediately. If the heifer is training vigorously and the birth appears to be uh, progressing normally, the heifer should be left alone for approximately one hour. If there has not been no real progress after the hour has elapsed, uh, assistance may be required. Mm, okay, okay, now I understand. Thank you for the elaboration. What about vets? Huh? When do we when do you think we should call? vets for help. Okay, so a wet should be called if a heifer is found to have difficulty calving, the birth appears to be breached, and also the heifer's condition has become weak. So a wet may be required to correct a difficult calving and also to pres prescribe and administer any of the veterinary drugs required to assist with the calf and heifer's survival during and also after the calving. Ah, okay. All right, Travis. So have you ever experienced seeing having post-difficulty birth before? Yeah, after a difficult birth, young calves in particular often desert their calves. It is wise to keep the cow and calf confined in a small area after assistance have been given. 
they can then be watched and should not be allowed to allow back with the main herd until the cow has accepted the calves and will allow it to suck. Sometimes it may be necessary to hold the cow in a crush or race and force her to allow the calf to drink for the first few days. Wow, that is very informative, Travis. So since we've talked about prepartum, what about postpartum management though? So once they have calved successfully, young calves are required to produce a good supply of milk and become pregnant again soon after. To achieve this, they must be well fed from calving until the end of the mating. Uh, talking about milk production, so what should we take into consideration about uh, milk production during uh, postpartum? So the main factors determining how well cows grow is the amount of milk their mother produced. In this term, uh, this is this in turn depends on such thing as the age and breed of the cow, but it is also influenced by feeding management. Young cows produce less milk than mature cow. Consequently, the growth rate of cows from two years old or three years old cow is normally 10 to 15% less than that of cows that are from cows age five or six. Nevertheless, young cows can produce good cows if they are well fed after calving. Feed intake before calving has a relatively small influence on milk yield, but after calving, the effect is enormous. Once they start to produce milk, cow of any age need at least twice as much food energy as they did before calving. If they don't get this, they will lose weight and their milk production will be depressed. Oh, I see. Uh, thank you so much, Travis, for the discussion. I'm gonna cry. No problem, Shika. It's fun to discuss about this topic. Since we already know about taking care of mama cows, how about the baby cows? Do you know anything about it, Shika? Yes, I do understand a little about it. Just like cows, cows have pre and postpartum treatments as well. Let's talk about the prepartum care first. Lah. Sure. The first nutritional management in the last trimester, uh, during the last trimester of the mama cow, is the first factor. So during the last trimester, adequate energy and protein should be provided while avoiding overfeeding in hyphens to prevent fetal oversize, excess adipose deposition in the birth canal and resultant dystocia. Preventing excess body conditions called BCS in hyphens prior to calving also has a significant beneficial effect on the both, on both of them during the duration of parturition and the incidence of perinatal mortality. In contrast, cows losing excessive BCS may be carrying twins and should be, should be dried off early and fed to, to maintain body condition and monitor for obstetrical complications at calving. In addition, placing beef hyphers and cows on a straw diet pre-partum is to prevent potential dystocia, also can lower the immune status of both their colostrum and the calf. So in the rehearsals, reducing the dietary cation areas difference in the transition period has been shown to affect the linear decrease in the milk fever incidence and hence reduces the slow uh, calvings and compromise perinates. When congenital Congenital joint laxity and dwarfism has been diagnosed. In usually in sucker cows, dilution of the silage only diet with alternative forages uh, is recommended to cure this disease. Wow, interesting. Le. Are there more factors to highlight for prepartum pre care? Um, yes, according to my understanding, pharmacological induction of parturition is also considered. If oversight calves are a problem based on previous experience, induction of parturition using uh, dexamethasone atoms can be used to deliver the fetus lah, alive without any uh, dystocia uh, occurrences. So where induction of parturition has traditionally been practiced in dairy cattle, there has been increase of loss of calves, retain placenta, and also reduce milk production. This is, however, associated with early induction, not induction at the Sometimes the natural way are still the best one, I guess. Yes, I couldn't agree more with you, Travis. 
Now that we know about prepartum care, care, what about postpartum? Yes, uh, moving on to postpartum, um, immediately after birth, calves uh, usually suffer from mild uh, fetal asphyxia, should be hypothermally stimulated by pouring cold water on them. Then, and then usually it's over the head and then they should be suspended upside down for at least a minute. Once the patient airway has been established, the at-risk calf should be placed in sternal recumbency. Mechanical ventilation should be, ventilation should be implemented in cases which do not respond to these first aid measures. While the clinical benefits of the pharmacological stimulants in newborn calves are equitable, dexapram has recently been shown to be beneficial in cases of fetal asphyxia. Buffer solutions for the sodium bicarbonate have safely been used also to improve acidity status in acidotic perinatal calves. Oxygen therapy for calf resuscitation is possible, even though not widely practiced or commercially uh, used in dairy or beef farms. As a positive effect of this measure on perinatal survival has only been proven in cases like respiratory disease syndrome in calves uh, which are born immature. Hmm, kind of complicated though. During birth, is technique important? Yes, yes, and very technique is very much important actually. So training of farm staffs with protocols for various obstetrical problems should be a part of the role of modern veterinary practitioners in the transfer of technical knowledge. As although almost a third of carvings are assisted, uh, less than 3% of these are attended by veterinarians actually. So farmers with good obstetrical technique can prevent genetic traumatic lesions, major cause of perinatal mortality, particularly now that mechanical technique traction is commonly employed at carving. So for example, recent researchers right, have shown that alternate limb traction should be applied until the elbows have entered the pelvis and simultaneously traction should then be applied to reduce uh, the trauma. Upon. Whoa, technique is really important apparently. I heard uh, Sheka that omphalitis is also common in newborn calf. Is that true? Yes, Travis. Prevention of oncolitis, also known as navel ill, is based on good maternity and hygiene, basically. And also, you can reduce calf residency time in unhygienic calving pens, ensuring adequate early intake of good quality colostrum and navel antisepsis. In a recent review of a navel care in perinates, huh, it is uh, that producers should actually avoid the possibly harmful court application procedures and concentrate on maternity pen hygiene and calf immunity. In herds with serious navel ill problems, producers should improve maternity pen hygiene, institute immediate and repeatedly caught dipping with chlorohexidine, and the removal of the calf immediately after birth to a clean calf pen and hand feeding colostrum and regular checking for navel ill with metaphylactic perinatal antimicrobial therapy based on the veterinary advice of course. I think that is all I know about pre and postpartum care for calves. Thank you Sheka. You have really enlightened me about the calf treatment and care. You're very welcome. I'm just glad I could share this around. Okay, so now I'm curious about the preparation of heifers and bull for copulation because the important parameter of successful reproductive of cattle is the preparation and carrying method of the heifers and bull. Do you know any of this amount? Uh, yeah, for sure, Travis. First, you must check the egg of the mother. Commonly, the cows reach maturation between one and a half until two years old. For cemental or limousine, is between 8 until 12 months, depends of, on feed quality, climate, and management. Oh, I see. And what is the ideal body condition? So for the best body condition of the cows, it's not too skinny and not too fat. That's the ideal body condition. Because if the cow is too fat, the fertility rate becomes low. Oh, okay, Alma. Now that I know about the body condition, affect the fertility rate. Now I'm curious too. How about feeding for the cows? For feeding is the one of the important factor too. If the cows is too skinny, we must give the sufficient fat to the cows 
according to the need, nutritional needs. If your capital isn't enough or a limited amount of feed throughout, throughout the year, efforts to fulfill the nutrition for the cows isn't needed frequently, but only given at a certain time or when the cows need the best nutrition. That is one month before mating, one month before labor, and while breastfeeding. Oh, I see. Okay, so then how to prepare the male cows? For this reason, superior males are those who are diligent in exercising, regularly weighing their weight, trimming their nails regularly, and ensuring good hygiene. Especially for the artificial insemination method, the male must be in top condition so that his cement can be accommodated and processed into frozen cement. Appropriate cement was continued to be checked for motility, abnormalities, pH condition, sorry, pH concentration, color consistency, and the volume. Then followed by the towing process by removing the, the cement from the liquid nitrogen and putting it in warm water or water with a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius for seven to 18 seconds. Then what's the next step, Akmal? Then the next process is the officer wears gloves and then the hand is inserted into the rectum so that it reaches and holds the cervix. Then cement is injected or sprayed on the uterine body. Cool. Now that I understand for the IP method, but how for but what about the conventional method? Yeah, so for the conventional method is to observe lust for each cow and the, mate, and the mating is carried out by one cow with one male. The observation of lust can be carried out every day in the morning and evening by looking at the symptoms of lust directly after 6 to 12 hours the symptoms of lust are seen. The mother of cow carried and tied into a mating cage which could be made of iron or wood. After 21 days of mating, re-observation was carried out and if there was no sign of last for the next two cycles or between 42 days, it was possible that the mother of the cow was successfully pregnant. Amazing. Thank you, Akmal. Thank you so much for the discussion today. Today's podcast session is really fun and informative through an interactive way. Let's end our session by saying goodbye. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.